جزا الله بالخيرات عنا إماتا لنا نقل القرآن عذبا وسلسالا فمنهم بدور سابعة قد تواساطت سماء العلا والعادل زهرا وكمالا uh, In this episode I want to speak about القراءات الشادة The قراءات which are shad What does shad mean? Before I go into defining what shad is, this point, inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to speak about in this episode five things regarding a shad. Five things that you must know regarding it. Number one is the definition of a shad, linguistically and technically, and I'm going to start with that, inshallah ta'ala. Al qiraat al shadha. Linguistically comes from the word shadda yashuddu shududan. Ama yashiddu, you can say that if you want to as well. Shadda yashiddu, ama shadda yashuddu. Both ways are right. Shududan. What does it mean? It means al infirad. It is to singular. It is to be singular. Now, yuqalu shadda rajulu. The Arabs they say shadda rajulu. إذا فرد عن أصحابه واعتزل منهم. When a person, when a man leaves his companions, he leaves the people, and he's alone. They say شد الرجل. The man, he's done شدود. He's strange. He's alone. وكل شيء منفرد فهو شاد. And everything that's alone by itself, it's called شاد. Anything that's by itself is called شاد in the Arabic language. It then shad means to be singular, to be alone. That's what it means in the language, in the Arabic language. What does shad mean to the ulama al qiraat? When they say this qiraat is shad, what do they mean by it? They mean kullu qiraat, every qiraat faqadat ahadul arkan al thalatha. It is every recitation that lacks. One of the three pillars that we mentioned previously. And we mentioned, remember, three pillars for the qira'ah to be accepted. Like Imam Ibn Jazari said, فَكُلُّ مَا وَافَقَ وَجْهَ النَّحْوِ وَكَانَ لِلْرَسْمِ احْتِمَالًا يَحْوِي وَصَحَ إِسْنَادًا هُوَ الْقُرْآنُ فَهَذِهِ ثَلَاثَةُ الْأَرْكَانُ وَحَيْثُ مَا يَخْتَلُّ رُكْنِ الْأَثْبِتِ شُدُودَهُ لَوْ أَنَّهُ فِي سَبْعَةِ the three pillars that we mentioned, muwafaqa to ahad al masahif al uthmaniya, that it has to be in line with one of the uthmani mushaf. Any one of them. The shad is the one that what opposes all of the masahif al uthmaniya. It's not in line with any one of them. It lacks that first condition. The second condition that it lacks is what. التواتر It's not multitude narration according to one view and another view is not صحة الإسناد والشهرة والاستفاضة that it's authentically transmitted and it's famous and it's popular and it's a قراءة which the Ummah are unanimously in agreement it misses it lacks that second condition the third condition it lacks is um, it's not in line with the Arabic language if any recitation lacks those three conditions, or any one of those three conditions, it's called a qira'ah which is shadda. And there are only ten qira'at that are accepted. Any other qira'ah other than those ten, they are shadda. وَلِذَلِكَ Ibn Salah, As-Subki, Zarkashi, Ibn Jazari, they said, that the shadda is here ma wara al qiraat al ashar al mutawatira. That shadda in simple terms is any recitation other than the famous ten recitations that we have. The five, seven that Imam al Shatibi mentions in Hirz al Amani, and the seven that um, Al Imam ibn al Jazari added on to from his Kitab uh, al Durrah. Those ten, they're mutawatira. They are 
in line with Ahad al-Masahif al-Uthmaniyya. They are also in line with the Arabic language. Any other recitation other than those 10 is Shahada. That's the easiest definition. This now makes us understand a very important point, which is any recitation that's even any recitation that is fabricated, it's made up, it's transmitted not from the Prophet ﷺ, but it's transmitted from a riwayat bil ma'na, someone narrated it by meaning. Like that which is transmitted from the Rawafid and the Mu'tazila and the likes of these Firaq al Batila, these misguided groups. Their recitation is even lower than Shad. And their recitation is Mawdu' is fabricated. It's lower than Shad. And Shad is higher than that. Shad is only one a recitation. It might have been transmitted from the Prophet. A qira'ah, which is Shad, could possibly be transmitted from the Prophet. But it's still rejected as a recitation. Why is it re rejected as a recitation? Is because it is not transmitted by multitude narration. It doesn't. It's not in agreement to one of the the masahif al uthbaniya Okay, it's rejected because of those. Or it's possible that it could have been abrogated. So shadda is not as bad as the qiraat which is narrated by meaning from some rawafid and the mu'tazil and the likes of these people. Their recitation is mawdu' is fabricated. Point number two. Zamanu shudud al qiraat When did this concept of this qiraat is maqbula and this qiraat is marduda, this qiraat is accepted, this qiraat is, is mutawatir, this qiraat is shad. When did this come about? The scholars, they have two views. The first view is it started when the al al akhira when the Prophet alayhi salatu uh, salam Jibreel came to him the last year in Ramadan and Jibreel came twice that year and he presented the Quran to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was told about those verses which were abrogated and those new new verses were given to him, alayhi salatu was salam. This was al-ardatul akhira, the final and last presentation of the Quran that the Messenger was given. ولذلك الإمام الشاطبي رحمه الله says وكل عام على جبريل يعرضه وقيل آخر عام عرضتين قرا. The Jibril used to come to the Prophet once in Ramadan every year, but the last and final. Uh, Ramadan of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi life, Jibreel came twice to the Prophet Alaihi Salatu to read the Quran on him. So they said that the concept of this Qira'a is Shadda and this Qira'a is not, that's when it happened. Jibreel told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam this Qira'a is Shadda and this Qira'a is wrong, this is the correct one. Another group of scholars, they said that the concept of Shudud, it came about Fi uh, Asr al-Khilafah uh, Uthman radiallahu anhu, at the time of Uthman radiallahu anhu. When Uthman sent the Masahif to the Amsar, the five main cities, and he commanded the other Masahifs to be burnt, this is what Uthman was doing. He was distinguishing the Qira'a which is mutawatir and accepted, and the Qira'a which is shahda. And both, uh, both opinions do not contradict one another. Yani the time of the Prophet is when it first happened, that the Qira'a was distinguished, what is accepted and what isn't. And at the time of Uthman, he reinforced that over everybody. Yani Uthman radiallahu anhu, because some of the people, they still have some of the old recitations. Uthman radiallahu anhu reinforced, brought to the people the final and last version of the Qur'an to them. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. The third point, inshallah ta'ala, I want to mention regarding uh, Al-Qira'at Al-Shadha is using the Qira'at Shadha as a proof. Are we allowed to use the Qira'at Shadha as an evidence, as a proof? I'm going to speak about it in two, two angles, inshallah ta'ala. The first one is, are you even allowed to recite the Qira'at Shadha? And the second one, inshallah ta'ala, is um, acting upon it. Uh, so I'm going to look at it from those two perspectives. 
The first perspective is حكم القراءات الشادة. What is the ruling in reading the قراءات which is شادة? يعني in the salah, praying, worshiping Allah based on it. The scholars they have three views in this issue. The first view is some scholars they said it's permissible and they allowed it. They said you can even pray the salah in it. A very small number of scholars said that. And this is one of the views attributed to the students of Al Imam Shafi'i and also Al Imam Abu Hanifa. And it is also one of the two riwayat of Al Imam Malik and Ahmed. The second opinion, which is the view of the Jumhurul Ulama, the overwhelming majority of scholars, that it is not permissible to read the Quran, to read the Qiraat Shada. Okay, at all, whatsoever. Rather, Ibn Abdul Bar transmitted a consensus in this issue. Ibn Abdul Bar, he, can, he transmitted a consensus in this issue. He said that is Ijma Adamu Jawaz al Qiraati bi Shada. Reading the Qira al Shada is not permissible by unanimous agreement, he's saying. And one of the arguments Ibn Abdul Bar pushes forward is that he says, Fuqaha'i Baghdad, the jurist of Baghdad, the scholars of Baghdad, they requested repentance from um, anyone who recited the Quran in a uh, uh, recitation which was Shad. And the famous story that many of us are aware of, Qisa to Shumbud and Ibn Miqsam. Ibn Shumbud and Ibn Miqsam al attar Ibn Miqsam al attar they have stories that was transmitted regarding them in Baghdad, in Iraq. Ibn Shumbud was said, he used to read the Quran bil qiraati shadha. And he used to look for the qira'ah of Ubay ibn Ka'bin and the qira'ah of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, which was in op opposition to the masahif of uh, Uthman sent. So he used to dismiss that and he used to collect the qira'at of Ubay and Ibn Mas'ud and he used to read that to the people. So the scholars, they said, repent from this or else. Ibn Shumbud. Ibn Miqsam, on the other hand, what he used to do was he used to read the Quran in accordance to the Mus'haf of Uthman ibn Affan, the Masahif he sent, he would read it in accordance to that. As long as it's in line with the Arabic language, he wouldn't look for if it had any naql, any transmission from the Prophet ﷺ. He would dismiss any transmission from the Prophet. He would look at the Mus'haf himself, okay, Ahad al-Masahif al-Uthmaniyya, he would look at one of the Uthmani uh, Masahif, he would read it and he would say, I'm going to read it like this because the Mus'haf of Uthman accepts it and it's gr grammatically, it's correct, there's nothing wrong with it, even if it hasn't been ta taught to us by the Prophet ﷺ. And the scholars, they requested him to repent from this because the Quran is not just about reading from the Mus'haf of Uthman and it's in accordance to the Arabic language alone. It has to be transmitted from the Prophet alayhi, alayhi salatu wasalam. There's a second, there's a third view in this issue, whether you're allowed to read the Qira'a al -shadha. There's a third view. The third view are a group of scholars, they've chosen to take a middle path. They said, the Salah which is wajib, like Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, Fajr, Jum'ah, they said these prayers which are obligatory, you're not allowed to, Recite with, with Al Qira al Shada. They said, No, you're not allowed to. Why? Because the Qira al Shada, there's a, pros, there's a possibility or a probability it could be from the Prophet or not. And you're praying your salah on something you're not sure whether it's a Quran. And so they said, On that basis, your salah is null and void and you must repeat it. Okay? But they said, You can pray with it in your Sunan, your voluntary prayers. Because they said, you are not sure that you've come with something that nullifies your prayer. Because the qira'ah, you're not sure it's not from the Prophet. That's the view that they've taken, but it's very weak. And so the view that's the strongest, and it's the only view that should be taken into consideration, is the view of the Jumhur al-Ulama, the overwhelming majority of scholars, which is, it is not permissible to recite the qira'ah al to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with it, 
to get closer to Allah with it. You can't read it in your salah. You can't read it outside your salah and read it to get closer to Allah by it. It is not permissible. The second point I want to go in regarding using the Qira'a Shadda as a proof is whether you're allowed to act upon it. The Qira'a Shadda, are you allowed to act upon it? There's two views regarding this. The uh, first view is the view of Al Jumhur al Ulama, the overwhelming majority of scholars. The overwhelming majority of the scholars, they are of the opinion that it's permissible to uh, act upon the Qira'at al Shadda and to extract rulings from the Qira'at al Shadda. Istimbatat al Ahkam, Istimbat al Ahkam al Shari'ah, Minha. And they even permitted to extract rulings, jurisprudent rulings from the Qira'at al Shadda. And they said that our argument is that the Qira'at al Shadda it is bimanzilati khabar al ahad. They said that the Qira'at al Shadda it's the, like the level of a singular narration in hadith. And a hadith which is ahad, do we not accept it? Yeah, of course we do accept it. Ah, we do accept it. We do accept it. And we take rulings from the Khabar al-Ahad. So here they're saying that the Qira'at which are shadha, rulings can be taken from it. And for example, um, the Qira'at of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, when he recited the ayah, قوله تعالى السارق والسارقة فقطعوا أيمانهما عبد الله بن سعود used to recite it like that that the one who the man who steals or the woman who steals cut their right hand off يعني أيمانهما عبد الله بن سعود had a قراءة like that this قراءة is شاذة and it's a قراءة شاذة also the حنفية when it comes to صوم كفارة اليمين a person made a kafara to yameen and he has to fast, right? It's the time when the fasting becomes obligatory. Do those, does that fasting have to be consecutive? Hanafiya, they said yes. When they were asked, okay, what's your evidence that you must? They brought the qira'ah of Abdullah, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, فَمَنْ لَمْ يَجِدْ فَصِيَامُ ثَلَاثَةِ أَيَّامٍ مُتَتَابِعَاتٍ Abdullah ibn Mas'ud used to recite it as mutatabi'at. That was an additional thing Abdullah ibn Mas'ud's qira'ah had. And so mutatabi'at means consecutive, one after the other. So the first view, they say, you are allowed to act upon the qira'at which are You are even allowed to extract rulings from the qira'at which are shada because the qira'at shada is equivalent to what? It's equivalent to khabar al-ahad. The second opinion in regards to acting upon the qira'at which are shada or using it as an evidence, and using ahkam from it, jurisprudent rulings from it, taking your religion from it. The second view says, you're not allowed to do it. They are, and they oppose the jumhur. And this is the call of the shafi'iyyah, and their hujjah and their proof in this issue is that the qira'at al shada they were trying to fit the criteria of a Qur'an. They were not trying to fit the criteria of a hadith. And because it lacked the criteria of it being a Qur'an, we won't give it another title, or we will not put it into the level of hadith. That's what their argument uh, is. But what they all agree upon, both parties, they both agree on. The, Ali, the ones who said that you can't act upon it, and the ones who said you can act upon it, the ones who said you can act upon it are the Jumur, and the Shafi'i who said you can't act upon it. They all agree upon that the Qira'at Shadda can be used for al-qawaid al nahwiya You can use it for grammatical analysis. You can use it for grammatical rulings. You can also even use it for uh, al-qawaid al sarfiya You can use it for the morphological uh, rulings and principles. Now, inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to go into the fourth uh, point regarding al-qira'at al shada the fourth point I wanted to discuss in this episode, which is ashharu ruwat al-qira'at al shada Who are the most prominent Narrators, when it comes to the Qiraat which are Shadda, who are the most known? Like, who are the people? If I see them, I recognize mm, this man's Qiraat. It's a Qiraat which is Shadda. I'm gonna I'm gonna divide that into two. Okay, I'm gonna divide it into two. The ulama divide it into two. They say the ones, the first group is known as Ruwat al Arba'a ba'd al Ashara. They are the four after the ten. Okay, these are the four. 
right after the ten qurra. So these four you learn them separately. And then there's the ruwatsh ashad umuman, those who are general, uh, generally just mentioned. But these four are closest to the ten qurra. Who are they? Al Hassan al Basri's qira. And he's one of the narrators in that. He died the year 110 Hijriya. Muhammad ibn Abdul Rahman ibn Muhaysin, who died the year 123 Hijriya. Yahya ibn Mubarak al Yazidi al Baghdadi, who died the year 202 Hijriya. Sulaiman ibn al Asadi al Amash, Sulaiman ibn Mehran al Amash, he died the year 148. These are called Arruat al Arab'a, Ba'd al Ashar. They are Ba'd al Ashara, they are after the 10. There's the Ruwat al Shawad Umuman. They are ones who are generally just, they are mentioned Umuman. And there are seven of them Ibn Mas'ud, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, who died in 32 Hijriya. Abu Musa al Ash'ari, 52 Hijriya. Ibn Zubair, this, he died 73 Hijriya. Nasr ibn Asm al Layfi al Basri, who died in 99 Hijriya. Mujahid ibn Jabrin al Maki, who died in 103 Hijriya. Al Dahak ibn Muzahim, who died 105 Hijriya. Muhammad ibn Sirin al Basri, who died 110 Hijriya. These are called Ruwat al Shawad al Umuman. Now I'm going to go into the final and last point for today's episode, which is Amthila. Some examples, inshallah ta'ala, of Qiraat which are Shad. Some examples, inshallah ta'ala. I'm going to give three examples, bi al Karib. And these three, inshallah ta'ala, I'll explain why they are shad. The first one is, قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى إِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ رُسُلٌ مِّنْكُمْ إِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ رُسُلٌ مِّنْكُمْ This qira'ah, okay, Ubay ibn Ka'bin recited it as إِمَّا تَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ Instead of إِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ why? Because Rusul is Jam'u Taksir. It's a broken plural. And the Jam'u Taksir can accept a verb which is Mudakar or Mu'annath, masculine or feminine. So that's why it can be said, Ta'tiyannakum ama Ya'tiyannakum. This recitation of Ubay ibn Ka'binna, it doesn't go against Al Rasm al Uthmani. It doesn't go against the Uthmani Mus'haf. None of it, it goes against it. The issue with it is that it's غير mutawatir. It hasn't been transmitted to us through mass transmission. So this qira'a is shadda. Also, the second example is فَسْعَوْ إِلَى ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Masru' ibn al-Ajda' he narrated from Ibn Mas'ud that he used to recite instead of فَسْعَوْ فَمْضُوا إِلَى ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ He used to recite it as. This on the other hand, the problem with it is مُخَالَفَةٌ لِلْرَسْمِ الْعُثْمَانِ It goes against the Uthmani Qur'an. And none of the five Masahif Uthman sent, none of them has in there the recitation of Ibn Mas'ud here. Also, وَمَا خَلَقَ الذَّكَرَ وَالْأُنْثَى Abdullah ibn Mas'ud used to read it as وَالذَّكَرَ وَالْأُنْثَى And it's a qira'a which is shad. Why is it shad? Because it's first of all, it's not mutawatir. And secondly, it goes against the Rasm al Uthmani. It goes against the Rasm al Uthmani. So, those three examples give you an understanding of what the Qira'at which is Shadda is. And it is very important that you study the Qira'at which are Shadda. It's very important. Uh, the reason is because the Orientalists, the non Muslims, the, uh, the missionaries, they use the Qira'at Shadda sometimes to show that the Qur'an is contradicting itself. And if you look at it, you say, this is Qira'a Shadda Aslan. Why are you bringing it with a Qira'a which is Mutawatira? I'm a Qira'a which is uh, Maqbula. You see? So that's why we mentioned it, inshallah ta'ala, in this episode. Uh, I'll leave you there, inshallah ta'ala. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Uh, Barakallahu feekum for listening to me. Wa jazakumullahu khayra. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How can you do a two second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel? Simple, like this video and click subscribe. Why? 
it will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users. And imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.